So yeah, the, I, I, I guess this one is going to be more informal. The, the main idea is to try to you know, talk, talk through the our current trademark and logo and uh, policy for the trademark and are we going to enforce it or not. There's been some discussions in the main list in the past about this, but uh, I think the, the, all the main stuff about the trademark card stuff, so it, it was, it was <coughs> an, uh, uh, an attempt to try to, you know, uh, jump start it again and do more stuff for now. So, I uh, think the current status is that fortunately, uh, we, well, fortunately, we don't have a trademark policy right now, uh, as far as I know, there's been discussion some, uh, but uh, when there was a, 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 an SPI, uh, I think it was in Oslo, when there was a meeting, uh, we talked about the trademark, and there was a going to start a trademark meeting at SPI, but I think that eventually got only to the a draft that uh, Benjamin McAfee has up there, um, available at his wiki. Uh, fortunately, we chose the right logo to make the open logo, because otherwise we, 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 we would have a lot of issues. That's the Kaffir Press Shop. Uh, people just put up logos there and, and get people to uh, uh, buy mugs and, and t-shirts and all kinds of weird stuff, since our official logo, which shouldn't be there, and actually, it, it, it was at the time, it, was, it has been there at some point in time, but it, it's been removed. Uh, I think well, we, we complained about that at some point in time. Uh, fortunately, it's, in, it, it's not very attractive. Most people go well, with the late and taken logo to get all the t shirts and all this stuff. So, if we don't know how the shop works, uh, people don't actually produce anything. They just make a design, put it in the, in the shop, and get the benefits of all the of all this, uh, things that are being sold. Uh, if we if this had been our official logo and with a current, uh, well, the one we hold more close to, uh, I don't believe we could. Uh, that's yours, right? No. No. Okay. I uh, I think this would be a very good example of not enforcing a trademark uh, on 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 our logo. Okay, but I mean we're not very concerned about that about this one especially. But so it would have been if it would have been this logo on a T-shirt. Then you, it wouldn't be an example of the. Logo. I mean, if, if that would, uh, uh, I mean, that logo is the one that we get a put a more strict license on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the, I believe both are trade market, but um, uh, people are not using that because they don't like that one. So people are using that one, <laughs> which even if it's trade market, we don't worry too much about. So we let people use it in in all kinds of ways. But uh, um, if it, that happened in our official logo, it's a very good example of how not to enforce the trademark and how to get it looted and, okay. and, and used. So, I mean, we would be, we probably are not, even if this one is trademark, we probably will not be able to, to enforce it now on in, in, in any way. Right, it's still worth keeping the registration though, because having it as a still as a registered trademark means that it, nobody else can trademark it and then use yeah. that against us, mm -hmm. which does happen, particularly in broken jurisdictions. So, um, what can happen if we don't enforce our trademark? Well, uh, that was the case that I was very well known. If, I, I, don't know, I don't know if this is the latest news or, or these changes, but uh, you know, Linux was unable to uh, set a uh, registered Linux trademark in Australia, right? Uh, when he, there was a I think they started first because there was a company trying to use uh, the Linux trademark and trying to enforce it use. I, I can give a summary of that. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Um, so there's a company called Linux, um, so there's an organization called Linux Australia um, based in New South Wales, which is a community group that does Linux Australia community stuff, organizes them, and what they use, so forth. Um, the company in South Australia then decided to make their registered name be Linux Australia uh, Proprietary Limited, which um, is fine for the different um, state to what Linux Australia Inc. is registered in. Um, and then they decided to try and register the Linux trademark. Um, the trademark office then contacted us to see if we wanted to, Linux Australia Inc. to see if we had any comments and we objected to it and whatever. And after a few years that eventually got rejected. Um, at which point we tried to register Linux Australia and Linux as trademarks. And um, that didn't work because our paperwork was really dodgy at the time. And following that, we talked to all other um, 
of um, oh, I forgot the name. Who's, who runs the um, so what was the Linux Foundation before it was the Linux Foundation? Um, OSGL. Yes. Yeah, so OSGL wanted to us to try to register the Linux trademark in Australia. And we got the paperwork slightly more correct by that point, but um, the trademark office basically said that at this point it's a generic term that we don't think we will need a lot more information for anyone to be able to register. So the trademark office has said no one can register it, so at that point we don't have the problem where someone else is going to yeah. register it and then use it against us. So. Um, but currently, like, the current status of, of the R trademark is that it's trade market in the US, but not in some countries in Europe, but that's about it. So uh, it's still we're open to the views of people, so what kind of views of basically uh, right now uh, in the U in the European Union, or anybody we could set up a mirror with the Fabian and both. That's not nice. And distribute a uh, contaminated version of Debian, and then uh, that way, say, you see Debian is corrupt, it doesn't work, or it's full of viruses, or it's, it's corrupt, your computer is broke, broke it down, uh, um, and still using Rani. Uh That hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. Well, people seem to actually do that with Firefox, though. Uh, because it's really well known on Windows, so they'll buy Google Ads or whatever with it and try to get them to download Firefox, it's not Firefox. Mm, what well, the second one actually happened, uh, uh, Derivative changed his name, well, provided a name that was Classic Debian, and uh, there was a lot of fuss in the uh, private mailings about this. Uh, actually, uh, nobody liked that because it was like saying, is it, this is a trusted version, so what is Debian the other version untrusted, so please change your name. Uh, he eventually changed the name to another name, it was at Pragmatics at, at the time, and I think it's, that's still a name. Uh, but we would not like actually people to use the name in some kind of a compound uh, thing that would, uh, you know, kind of dilute our, our, our mark. Most of the derivatives have actually found a good name for them. So that was only one example, but could be more in the future. Uh, that, but we, I think we handled that nicely, even though if the developer didn't like it too much. So, but I think that that, that went well. Uh, but right now, people could uh, sell software named Debian, or could even include it on the distributions, or on sorry, on on magazines, and say this is Debian distribution when when it actually it's it's not. So people will get confused when they try it out and say. Oh, this is Debian. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, or this is crap, or whatever. So even if they they're not trying to, you know, uh, go against Debian with a contaminated version, they can still pick up something, say it's Debian, and, and that would confuse our user base. And uh, oh, people oh, uh, yeah, for logo abuse, people could use the view. I think this this has come up sometimes. People have uh, taken the logo and uh, used that for because they find it nice and for other products. I, I don't know, I don't remember the specific case now, but there was one, at least one case, it was logo was like uh, maybe tilted uh, 90 degrees or 180 degrees, and it was exactly the same logo with the same rendering, and so because they like it very much. So uh, at that time, eventually, we have, we might have the issue of, of uh, the Delivia name getting included because of paper abuse. So uh, we're not, uh, very keen right now on enforcing this. Yes, well, sorry. Okay. Uh, I thought that within trademark law, like the there were sort of fields of endeavor or something. Like yeah, that. Right. So that if someone uses Debian for a vacuum cleaner, yeah, that's right. The name they, they can use. I, I don't know about the logos. I don't know if the logos have a given field. I believe I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not a. I, I should have said this with also. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I, yeah. I, I'm not sure if the logos have a specific. Uh, realm of, of use. I think they're, they're, they're not that specific for names. There's like, you know, the different uh, places you can use it. And we only have it registered in what is uh, in trademark section. It, it, it's the section of 42, I believe, which is only software. It, it actually doesn't include educational stuff. So people could, uh, somebody could start up the Debian University or maybe could give up Debian courses or something. It doesn't include software services. So people could uh, start up a company named Debian which provides Debian a uh, service related to the Debian, the software, without using the trademark. Right. Uh, but not specific to software. So, I mean, uh, if somebody uh, started a company, or there are actually some companies I've seen 
uh, with the date, and then in, in it, if, if it's not related to the software, then I'll be using the trademark. Mm -hmm. As long as it's some uh, completely different field. As for the logo, I don't really know if you, uh, if if, uh, if that is uh, limited to a given a field, which I believe it is not. But uh, I'm not a lawyer, so. Uh, but the uh, logo trademark is, is slightly different. Right? Okay. Okay. So. Uh, so this is all, that's that's why I said so uh, so sober name David, not something else. It's uh, something else and different. So <coughs> one of the things that has come to a point, and there were a few uh, uh, a few years ago, and there's constantly more uh, every time you look. It's a lot of people registering Debian as a top level domain for whatever country. So if you take a little bit, uh, I, I try to dig a little bit on this and, and you will get, it's very difficult to really know what, what, uh, uh, what they are affiliated to, but there are some that kind of relate to Debian. There may be some that even are registered to SPI, because even if the, it's a Debian developer that we set the domain and hand it off to SPI, even if SPI doesn't know about it, but you know, in the view who is information is listed as, as belonging to SPI. There are some that uh, we don't know where they go. Actually, they don't resolve to anything. They're just registered by some guy, and we don't know what it's going to be used to. There's actually some commercial people that sell uh, products uh, that they call, even they might sell Debian CDs. Uh, we actually don't know if there are you know, like vendors in our list or not. And there's obviously some cyber squad and all of that. I think there's, there's a lot of them. I, I counted and there were about 40 sites. I counted them today. I think there were about 40 sites, uh, uh, first level domains using Debian, which excluding Debian.org, obviously, but uh, 30 different places, which is not too much, but I think there were about 300 uh, of them re registered already today. Okay, um, so this wouldn't be much of an issue if we weren't for the novice people that will go maybe first to their top level domain to find Debian than to Debian.org. So right now we, we haven't had any issue of, 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 of people getting mirrors trying to uh, tell their Debian when they're not, but we could have that at any point in time. And we're not enforcing that, we're letting just people uh, uh, go. Actually, we're not able to enforce that because in most Places we actually don't have the trademark, right? so I mean people could register. Uh, I believe Debian friends, friends without any problem because we don't have the registered trademark over in France. Uh, they couldn't do that in Norway, I, I believe, and some other uh, in the UK, not not even in the UK, but some other places they could because they, they don't have a registered trademark. Right? So uh, we couldn't avoid that at any point. Um, so what's the status now of the trademark itself? Uh, well, Obviously, it's registered in the U.S. As for the European Union, uh, I know of some registration of the name, some of which have been known to SPI. Uh, even some organizations have asked for the a license to SPI. I believe the uh, Norwegian people from school Linux has asked for the license, even if they actually didn't need it. But they asked for the license to SPI, and that was on the on some council on some board meeting. Uh, they were granted permission, but we don't. Right now, have uh, a U uh, a a U Y trademark registration for for all the all the different countries. So that means that there are some countries that have the trademark registered, but some do not. So uh, we're not at all covered. And uh, actually, some companies might have started to register the the, uh, the, the trademark to use it. Which in this case in Spain, actually, it was when when we did that in. Uh, uh, this case was a guy, we didn't know why it was uh, pay, uh, trademarking Debian. It was known to us, uh, to, I don't remember which mean, but I think he jumped to the news. And uh, we tried him to uh, let go the trademark and we, uh, he didn't want to. Actually, he ended up he ended up saying he was going to give it away for free, but then he ended up asking for like maybe $10,000 uh, for the trademark itself. When in Spain, the trademark registrations cost 300, 400 euros. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, it was for, for expenses or Yeah, something. expenses. Of, yeah, for expenses on, on defending the trademark, which he hadn't done at all, because uh, the, for, for the whole time that we were, we were talking with the guy, there was already Debian Mirror, there were uh, uh, all the Debian derivatives in Spain, include Debian names, so why don't you say this is Debian based, and there were magazines providing Debian CDs, so I mean, he couldn't. Uh, at all, see, so he was defending his trademark. 
uh, eventually we found that all this uh, discussion was moot because uh, we didn't notice until uh, uh, beginning this year that the Debian trademark did not register it. It was in like three or four different chapters of the trademark sections, but not in software section. So we ended up saying, okay, we're going to let him go. It's basically, uh, this is kind of stupid. We're not going to uh, try to defend trademark in one section we, we didn't know. Uh, we were not actually using it, it's not registered in the, in, in, in the US. Uh, actually, we should have known better about trademark law, we have some policy on, on, on what, what's legal and what's not. We could have uh, prevented all the stupid uh, uh, talking about that uh, all these years because we would have known from the beginning that it, it was not actually you know, go, going into the section that uh, trademark is uh, very much registered. Uh, this is I have to say, this is the first I've heard of this. Has this been... It was on Debian probably. Yeah, it was on Debian, what, very recently? No. Well, no. But, uh, yeah, it was... I it must have missed that. The, Did the, you know about this? I wasn't aware that it had sorted itself out. Maybe, yes. You got three members of the S-Pad. Yeah, well, three members of the S-Pad are born here, and we don't know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and well, I do normally read Debian private, so... No, this was in, in SPI private, I believe. Uh, in some point in time, it wasn't, it wasn't just in SPI private because I'm not on that mailing list. No, 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 it was not. I don't remember right now. But actually, what 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 we got there? Uh, I don't think we can all be that smart, can we? Yeah, actually, I mean the the sections that the guy registered trademark in has been there from the first for very first time when I sent an email to SPI with all the paperwork the guy had done. So we none of us noticed that he was actually not reducing that on the art. So that's from the very first email about this stuff, we provided all the information of the sections and everybody missed it. <laughs> but uh, so... Uh, well, we I don't need Spanish, so... <laughs> I was even on the board then, so... <laughs> but, um, so, uh, until recently, we didn't, uh, I think it was maybe uh, uh, when we discussed this again, in, uh, in uh, might have been, between the first might have been, January, February this, this year, we noticed, hey, well, well he, he's not even in this section, so we're going to let it go. I mean, we're not going to continue this. I'm, I'm very glad but now that I kept, that, well, not I, but we, that we kept stalling this all this time until <laughs> we found somebody who knew what the fuck was going on. Because well, that, that comes up for it. <laughs> but uh, actually, the, we're not, uh, we didn't pursue any more the, 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 the back and forth powers to get uh, to to litigate against this guy, which, one, which, was, which was one of the things uh, the Spanish developers were pushing for last year, or maybe two years ago. So we well, we didn't ask for that anymore because we said, well, what's the use? But uh, I think all the information was there from the beginning. But uh, either way, uh, there was actually two cases here. Uh, the guy that registered the, the trademark, which is a different case from the guy that registered the domain. Which is NASA. So that one. Uh, so, so that, those are two different let things. Let me interrupt you. Yeah. If, the, if the trademark has not yet been registered in Spain in the software category, why are we not immediately registering it in the software category? We did it at the moment. Yeah, uh, we didn't do it at the time. That was uh, when we talked about it. Because uh, when we originally talked about trademarks in the, EU, in the European Union, uh, somebody said, I think it was, uh, it was, uh, who was it? it was I think it was Joey? Joey has a name? No, no. Martin Schultz. Martin Schultz, yeah. That, uh, actually, have, I remember the emails about this, that we, we actually, the Spanish uh, Debian Association asked for a license for uh, for SPI. I wanted to register the trademark, and we didn't do it because we were told that the trademark was going to be registered uh, European wide. Uh, so if there were uh, local oh, yeah. registrations, that would mean that that registration wouldn't be able to complete. If but that was about three years ago, and we, I don't know if that went forward. Local yeah. registration will interfere with... with uh, yeah, because as soon as you're, the, the trademark is registered yeah. in European wide, and the European registration for the trademark registration, it applies to all countries. But if you already have the trademark registered in a given country, then you cannot do that. So we were told not to do it. I, I was. We were told. Yeah. We, yeah. we, we were, were told, told not to, to, not to do, it. do it. If I remember correctly, the way it sort of goes is, the, you register it in one country. It then go. It doesn't automatically, but you can get it pushed up to a Europe-wide thing. 
where it then sits for a while and filters down into all the other countries. But if there's a problem, it bounces back up again. Actually, when I last looked, like it's, uh, you can do it directly in uh -huh. European market. Uh -huh. okay. And it pushes down. It's, it's been a while since I checked. So, yeah. are we doing anything about this? And if not, why not? Do what? Are well, we doing this? Are we doing this? Can this be done not by some UK person? We've got both. Debbie in the UK is very active. We've got an SPI board member in the UK. Two now. Yeah. This should not be a problem. But I, this is. Yeah, I don't remember this. Maybe Neil knows more about this. I think it was, this was lost amongst the, you know, the, the death of the Fibonacci uh, yeah. Committee because I think the, the Fibonacci yeah. Committee was lost amongst the Fibonacci Committee the Fibonacci Committee because I think the people in the Fibonacci Committee were, were, were of this fact from the beginning. Right. Yeah. Because I remember talking about this in Oslo about uh, two years or three years ago. Well, do you know any reason why we can't, why we shouldn't register it just your applied? I don't know any reason why. It seems like obviously the right thing to do, unless it's extremely expensive, but it's not. It's not that expensive. No. Okay, right, well, um, I'll take that, Neil and I will take that offline and, and, and we will sort this out. <laughs> if it can be sorted out. So, um, no, no, write down, write down. <laughs> so, however, <laughs> as for yes, when we talk about this, well, I was not involved in the in the media, I have to say that, uh, that was some other people. But from, my, from what I remember at Oslo, we're right now at the same point we were like three years ago. We're not uh, doing anything more to enforce the trademark. We don't have, we still don't have a policy on how are we going to enforce the trademark if we're going to, or what, uh, or even guidelines to the developers in the, their countries of what they should or not do regarding the trademark. And I think that's where the point we stand now on where should, we should be working now. So the, the, the point is, from now on, do we re-enact that uh, committee or whatever, or, or the work on the trademark stuff? Do we let it, you know, flow until maybe some of the uh, misuse hits us in the face, or, or so it's uh, either either we do something now or we just uh, keep going as, as as it is. Right now, I think we we haven't advanced too much. We don't have a policy, or we have a draft policy that isn't that is right here. I think. Uh, which is rather simple. And but that's that's Macros. Okay, uh, the so, one. Sorry, can I just get this straight? We had a trademark committee. Uh, yeah, the SPI. By the way, the SPI, SPI had a trademark committee. What did they end up doing? I don't know. I was no not. Idea. They didn't report. Yeah, no report. It ended up with no reports. Uh, I think it just ran into the sand. It's not. I think they were going to write some policy document or something, but. You know it was the, the trademark committee that we got a report from at the last board meeting, wasn't it? Yes, but yeah. that, that was not a report on this time, yeah. this was just board meeting. So it does this, we have had a report <laughs> in the last <laughs> term. <laughs> so first of all, who are the members of the trademark committee? That, that would be the first question. Well, there's MJ, 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 and I'm not sure about anyone else's. If you have a look at the... Um, yeah, we can vote. www.spi-inc.org slash secretary. And MJ is not here, right? MJ's already gone now, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching um, the stream. Um, He's watching the stream. Should be the somewhere? Is he watching the stream? Committee is here? Yeah. There you go. So he's on RSA? Membership. Yeah, oh, it was a hashtag company. Oh, oh, there's a lot of people in that one. Great parents. Great parents. For the worst. So, all, all, all current EPL. Like <laughs> what the hell was this drafted? <laughs> Mine has been DPL for quite a long time. <laughs> Membership is open by subscribing to the main list. So, Alan is it in fact the case that, the, that only Mako and MJ Ray are subscribed? Are actually yeah. doing yeah. anything? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think Mako is doing anything currently. Well, didn't he write that draft? Yeah, that, that, I, oh yeah, that's an old draft. Yeah, that's yeah. an old draft. He has an app uh, online, and that's the only thing I've, I've found related to the committee. Which is actually not on SPI, but on his website. <laughs> okay, so maybe we should agree what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this open use logo, the Swell logo. And mm -hmm. are we all agreed that this Swell logo we're just going to let... Yeah. We'll keep the trademark to stop anybody else screwing us over, but we're not going to try and stop anybody using it. I believe the exact phrase was um, SPI isn't going to enforce it as an unregistered trademark or whatever, <laughs> except to make sure it's still available for everyone to use. Right. In particular, we're not going to attempt to make sure that it stays a trademark. If it becomes diluted, then that's fine. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Right. 
As long as it's available for everyone to use, that's the... The official use logo, we don't care about because, I mean, nobody wants to use it, and so we're just going to... That, that's no longer true if you look at the t-shirt next to you. Right, yeah, right, right. But in, but, in practice, starts, but in practice, we don't really need to, to worry about that very much, and we don't... I mean, does this room care very much what the license is on that logo? So the the de facto well, the copyright license for both logos is to be the MIT once that's announced and we've worked out the appropriate ways to announce it without confusing everybody. And the usage trademark license of that logo is to ask the DPL to give authorization and it's gotta be related to Debian and related to official Debian or yeah. Debian derivative or right. whatever. Mm -hmm. And with respect to the word Debian we have is this proposal of NATO's? So we've got the word Debian as well. Yeah, yes. And we're proposing to use this word, the word Debian and the official use logo in the same way, and give so it the same license. The, no, no, no. You can't, you can't. Um, maybe, I don't know. We, we, don't have a, we don't have a real um, policy for it yet. Um, the only thing I know of is the is the policy on, if you want to call group of people hacking on Debian something official, you can call it something or other Debian Labs. So we've got SLX Debian Labs. That's a policy Martin made when he was doing it at some point. Right. But in general, the word Debian, we have not, mainly, we've not really issued licenses for. We've got, certainly not issued a, not a, a broad it. blanket license for any particular class of thing. And Correct. we've issued some <coughs> specific licenses for people <coughs> Specific things, and aside from that, anybody else using the word Debian, we will get into an argument with. We will decide on a, on, a, on a case by case basis whether we'll bother getting into an Well, we might decide to get into an argument with them, or we might send them a license. Or we might just <coughs> right. ignore them. And give right, them if we ignore license. them, then, right, that's not, a, that's not a sensible policy. We mustn't ignore them, but we must either decide that what they're doing is okay and formally permit them to do it, or we must ask threaten them, them with lawyers. Ask them to stop. Ask them, yes. ask them to stop. We need to ask them to stop in a, in a, in a firm and convincing manner. He's a naughty boy. Right, so is, anybody, is that a general understanding? We, because that's not written down anywhere, as I understand it. Not, not a dynamic. Yeah, I think part of the problem at the moment is it's, there isn't a trademark policy. It's what we should be doing. It's not what we are doing. Yeah. Right. Um, and and getting, getting a policy written down is actually very important. So, and, and having that at the website at SPI also that that's individual dating developers in particular countries who are part of some kind of local country organisation should be encouraged to attempt to register this trademark and transfer it to SBI or to their local associated money thing and you know should talk to the DPL about this. Yeah, I think we should have all the trademark and the domain. So right. people don't get confused because those are right. the main things that I mean. The main names aren't trademarks, but it's better to have both. Yeah. yeah. Rather than try to use one to get the other. So one one thing we don't have is uh, actually I was trying to start making it is a list of the different domains. And, and, and where are they used and, and what for are they used. So we could actually ask uh, developers that do have the domain to uh, provide information of what they're doing with it. Uh, right, but if they're DDs, we're I mean, unlikely to have a problem with them. So right. if, if if you're a DD and you're in some country where, you know, Debian dot some relevant domain in your country is not already registered, then you should register it and, you know, and then Register it first and ask questions later. And then somebody will be in touch. Or you should get in touch with somebody. Or, you know, park it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because actually it would be very easy to just point them to the, to the main site. So yes, okay. add DNS information to the main site. That's actually what some countries have done. Are there so they just take the, the main domain and point it to the to the to uh, the debit.org and that's it. So that so it forwards over there. Are there any Domains, any either CCTLDs or NTLDs that don't that 
that in not something isn't registered for is available. I suspect that you do that again. Debian dot au. Oh, uh, yes. Debian au is not available yet. Right. Maybe in the future. Ah. Debian dot com dot au dot org dot au dot net dot au probably. There'll be hundreds. There'll be hundreds of countries where Debian won't be registered. Yeah. Are we, are we going to do an underarm.com? Excuse me? <laughs> That's uh, all before your time. That can't be before your time. What, what did you say? <laughs> are we going to do an underarm.com? This was the very beginning of the, oh my god, what the fuck are they doing to our DNS? Um, where Procter & Gamble registered bodypart.com. Um, just because they thought they wanted to squat, basically. Right, so are we going to squat on Debian not everything? Right, you won't. That might cost some money. That would cost a fair bit of money. Yeah. I, I don't think that's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. I think if we have... Probably oh, maybe asking just people to monitor that. Mm -hmm. it means right, if we've got a DD in the country, then... Then do it, otherwise who cares? <laughs> I mean, realistically, we've got Debian or Org. I mean, does it actually matter that much? We've, no. got, the, we've got the big three, right? We've got Debian or Net and Com. <clears throat> I, I'm struggling to believe... Maybe I'm just, this is hugely English centric, but I'm struggling to believe that it's actually that, that big a deal if we don't have Debian or Central I don't think it's a deal. I think we have to monitor its use. I mean, we don't want somebody to set up Debian.fr and say that we have on the Euro, which is the right, sure. Yeah. So if we've got it, if we've got it, <laughs> country, that's fine, we can monitor it, but I don't think we need to care about the. No, no, I, I don't think, think we have to register it every a couple of domain just for Debian. Right. I mean, if, if a, Debian, a local Debian developer wants to. But, uh, I mean, there's actually already 247 registered. So, the, the question raised was can we make sure Debian.bs is registered and points to the list of Debian.org today? Yes. There we go. It is. It is. Does it point to the list? Output. I mean, it was only up for a second or two, but... but it looked like that domain does not actually exist. Could you bring that back up? Yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't know why that brings up. <laughs> that, looks like, that looks like a generic wildcard for the entire WS domain. Yeah, I think that's, that's my ISP providing a uh, uh, generic... Uh, Jeez. Yeah. Oh. Is that actually what? three different... Yeah. What the fuck does that mean? That my ISP is on crack, so they provide that. But those are the <laughs> main the main servers, so that's the first one is my ISP and those are well the main servers. Oh. <laughs> oh I see. Right. Okay. So they must satisfy this one. Oh okay. okay. And why BS? <coughs> As you scoop all the information that came from your ISP out of these files because then it might be true. What is what is BS anyway? Yeah? Botswana or something? Yeah but Botswana wouldn't be in Spanish. Oh right, because he's funny. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, anyway, this is not hugely yeah. interesting, is it? No. Yeah, do we have a, a so vendor for kind of like, 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 uh, specific, uh, specific uh, post? Because now we are browsing through the talking about the like, yeah, and everything. Yeah, I think the purpose of this box is yeah. to try to figure out what the situation is and what the situation ought to be and yeah. to decide who is going to yeah. do the things okay. that need to be done to get from here to there. <laughs> That's generally the purpose of meetings. So we've had the what the situation is. Has anybody written down some yeah. notes about? Yeah. You've written down some notes about what yeah. we think the situation ought to be. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For the three, so we've got three relevant trademarks. Yes. Right. And so we need to write some instructions for DDs. That's an action item. Somebody yep. needs to write some instructions for DDs. Um, and we also need to write some licenses, which many things many of these things have already been done, so we can just like when I say write licenses, get Mako's license and if we like it. No, right, it. I see. Yeah. Um, I see. And then get these things approved by the DPL. So thinking about the trademark and copyright licenses for the logos and the name, so we, we don't want to be in a position where some but downstream derivative of Debian don't go through and make some branding change that they're going to be violating any of our trademarks. Obviously with the copyright change, they're not going to be violating our copyright. 
is there anything in the current Debian system that oh. you would... Have you got a copyright registration certificate? For the United States. Sorry? Um, no. The United States, um, uh, uh, Samba had, guys had this problem. Um, some nice person decided to um, rip off the entire Santa source code and they had proof because their network went down and they were able to hold the Perl script off the NFS systems that they were using. The public had uh, was pretty open access. Um, it, it didn't help because they weren't a, they, they well, the copyright law in the United States is very odd. You can, it, it applies, but you can't sue anybody and get any money from them. Um, so, um, oh, but you can, you can, if you have a copyright registration certificate. The answer is no. No, pretty much no software in Debian has a copyright registration certificate. And we yeah. in Debian are not in a position to register the copyright because we're not the main copyright holders. On the name, on the name of Debian. Name is not copyright. Name is not You're confusing copyright and trademark. Please don't yeah. do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And we do have the trademark stick. Confusing words to yeah. avoid okay. intellectual property. Yes, I hate it. Right, it's so it, right? you've obviously lumped these things together in your head. You need to tease them apart. One second. So, do we so <laughs> if, if I were to take <laughs> some Debian thing and hack it up with it and then send it on to somebody, would I be violating the Debian trademark on the name Debian or on the logo? We don't use the official use logo in any branding of Debian, is that correct? As far as I'm aware, we don't. Because it can't go in there. Uh, I, I suspect it is in there in a couple of places. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use it extensively. I don't think... I, I think you'd have to go out of your way to actually um, um, misuse the, the official <coughs> but the word Debian, I mean, for example, the installer of the first screen says this is a Debian CD. Yes. And my presumably hacked up thing that wasn't a Debian CD would claim to be a Debian CD. Oh, it would still be a Debian CD, but not be an official Debian CD. And then the official Debian CD is built in a special room that causes <coughs> the title to change. I suspect so, but I you would have to look at the CD scripts. Right. So it's fine if. If we do some special switch to <laughs> turn on the use of our trademark, because that means yes. that people who get our source code don't. So there's already a bit of <laughs> debranding and stuff done in Ubuntu, which is incorporated into Debian through Debian Installer. I haven't looked into the details, so I can't write more on how it actually works. Yeah, most of the installation doesn't uh, explicitly name Debian, so it avoids that. That was done uh, many months ago to yeah. provide uh, Ubuntu for a way to use the installer without having to have all the strings and re-translate them, basically, which was the main well, issue. Also the technical translation. Yeah. yeah, so in order to avoid to have all translated, it was, uh, Debian was moved from most places, and in those that we, it was still there, it was substituted with variables, so they could be, you had the variable and change that with right. whatever you want. So the, the question really is, I mean, deriving Debian is not, at the moment, very easy to do, to put it quite mildly. But it would be nice to make it easy to do. And one of the things that we ought to sort out is that when you derive from Debian, you don't naturally end up in the position where SBI lawyers have to come after you because you've yeah, got something in some script somewhere. I believe most of the technical work for that is already done. Oh, good. But it may or may not be actually complete. We, we, to, to, be, to be honest, we can probably put off actually sorting this out until the deriving from Debian becomes a uh, yeah become well. It's common in the sense that there are whatever it is, 130 people doing it, but it's still it's not very hard. Yeah. Would it be worth um, writing a another set of instructions, instructions for derivers? I think, in general, a set of instructions for derivers would be a very good thing. But at the moment, if you try to write a set of instructions for derivers, you would go mad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Um, 
But that could be part of the uh, trademark policy. So I, I don't think it should. No, no. Having a section for the driver say you have to watch out for this and this and this, or we don't have to ask you for uh, for anything, or, or ask you, you don't have to ask for the license, even though the technical features are not there yet. You can still say, please take care when you do this, so you don't put the name of Debian in your city to distribute, or or, or name it uh, derivative like Debian uh, whatever. Try to use different names. So that, those kind of tips. Right, we should definitely mention that in the trademark policy. So, what, but one other thing for derivatives is that there are quite a few derivatives out there you'd like to say were based on Debian, but yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's trademarked, I'm not sure how to do that without either violating the trademark or violating the safety law. But based on, they can do that without violating, violating the trademark. Well, right. no, at the moment, they, at the moment, if they say, if they call themselves something, something or other Debian. Then yeah, so they definitely can't call themselves trusty yeah. Debian, for example, because we've already gone at someone for doing that. And they probably could say based on Debian, but they're often just not confident enough to do that. So it would be useful to have an explicit policy that says derivers, you should say you're based on Debian if you want to. Right. And we we approve of you saying yes. you are based on Debian if you are in fact substantially based on them. Yeah, and even if that's not necessarily, even if you don't actually need a license for that legally, it would still be helpful for them right. to say it. Yeah. You go down to the Ubuntu man pages, many, many of them are saying this is based on Debian, or, uh, and, it, and even some are rebranded in that way, so it's still saying this is the Debian software, and the name of the Debian developer sometimes. Too. Well, having the name of the Debian developer in the author field is entirely correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, yeah, but there's a context for, for, for that in the application, even though they have modified it in, the, in their way and repackaged it for the So, right now, the policy doesn't cover that, as far as I see. It doesn't mention it. It's probably okay according to trademark law in most jurisdictions because it's just a true fact. And you're not confusing, <laughs> yes. so, right? But but we don't expect our derivers. You know, they've got quite enough headache trying to get the damn thing to work without having to worry about trademark law. And it would be helpful if we just told them that a, you know, not only do we permit this, but we actually would like them to. Yes. Mm -hmm. Were there going to be some special logo sticker things I think on their websites? Um, so yeah, that so we did, um, or at least I did try and get a, a deriving brand as distinct from the official use and the open use logos. And a lot of, well, a reasonable number of people seem to say that why do we want a separate logo for this instead of just using this well? And at the time we kind of couldn't do that, but there's no reason for us not to do that now. So, I mean, yes, I think we should encourage derivers to use the swell. Yeah. Obviously, can, can they do that now? I mean, yes. they can do that now. Right. right, according to the new policy, which may or not be fully pro promulgated, but I think a driver can now be reasonably confident that they're not going to sue them even if we haven't quite made it official. Yes. Yeah. I think they always could use it because yeah. the yeah. policy was you may use this to refer to the Debian project or the Debian distribution, which, based on Debian, that's exactly what's doing, right? Um, but the question was whether that's actually what we wanted to do. And so, does anyone here disagree? Like, no. Many of okay. the logos that were suggested special derived logos were dreadful as well. Yeah. And the, the one that I quite liked was um, kind of wanted for a different sub project in Debian anyway. So, so we, we do, do we encourage the use of the logo as a, in a different logo? So, like making, getting it part of the logo? We, we encourage them to, to take as well and do something nice with it. <laughs> right, exactly, you know, if they, if they want to do a swirl in the castle, or they want to build the swirl into their existing, into their own logo and trademark it, or if they want to have the swirl in amongst a little pile of things at the bottom of their website, whatever they like. Okay. And we should encourage them to make full and free use of it, or something, you know, very encouraging phrase like that. There's actually something that's already been done. It's the official logo of the sword always red. Yes. Yeah, because because then they can make a blue with the sword. So the that is uh, a version. What's that? Oh fuck! You can find. Oh, there's this is some very nice logo. Oh, even the top one. That's cool. Yeah, and there's one. It's it. There's actually one. Uh, reference to our release schedules. 